So, Khalil, who benefits from the work of the Schomburg? Well, that's a great question. Uh, given our work product, actually, what this institution produces, uh, we have a number of, of users, um, a number of beneficiaries, uh, international, national, and local. One of the, the core functions of this institution is a research library. Um, as a research library, we make books, manuscripts, photographs, prints, arts, and artifacts, including, as well as uh, moving images and sound recordings, available uh, to the public and particularly to researchers, be they uh, lay researchers or scholars. So our fundamental uh, function and beneficiary uh, in terms of a community are uh, the public and scholars. Um, people come here looking to answer questions, important questions that are generated by their curiosities, by their professors, uh, and by their own intellectual interests. Um, and that spans literally the globe. We have international travelers who come here uh, from Asia, from Europe, from Africa, uh, who are interested in studying and coming to a singular place in, in search of information about the black experience, both here in the United States uh, and elsewhere. And so... Uh, we are open five days a week. They come to the Schomburg Center, and they're able to um, achieve their goals. Our other work products and beneficiaries are young people and their uh, educators. So we provide a series of educational workshops uh, throughout the year that uh, enhance the curricula of institutions, uh, public schools, parochial schools, charter schools. Um, so teachers come here and get a, a, a jolt and an infusion of, of the latest trends in, in black studies or in black history, and they take that information back to the classroom and you know really try to open the eyes and raise the consciousness of, of young people. The young people themselves uh, come here uh, for particular kinds of programming to focus on them. That's one of the things that I want to do more of is to really bring in a larger cohort of of students between the ages of 5 and 15 uh, who are served by this institution, but not as aggressively or in the most innovative ways that we could service uh, their needs. And that's uh, and a question. Is, yeah, that's a question that I want to ask you more about in a moment. But uh, you were talking about the size and the scope of the Schomburg and, and who benefits and who comes there. Um, in Atlanta, there's also the Auburn Avenue Research Library. Um, so not to make a comparison, but those two libraries, how how much material would you say nationally, you know, if you look at the Schomburg and you look at Atlanta, how much more material, how many other libraries or institutions uh, or even well that equipped to uh, serve the you know serve the populace as you described. Well, there's a, the African American Research Library in Tallahassee. Okay, um, I'm sorry, it's not Tallahassee. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is the third oldest Black research library. The Schomburg okay. in the Auburn Avenue Research Library, and then in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Um, outside of those three, in terms of being public libraries. Okay. Um, there are not many more, if any. Okay. The rest are either museums, right? They are publicly owned, right? Or universities, either public or private, who have research libraries. And so, within the context of academia, both at the HBCU level as well as in the uh, mainstream academic marketplace, um, there are a number of research libraries, special collections, and research institutes that um, do the same kind of work that the Schomburg does. But the Schomburg was, by any stretch of the imagination, first uh, in the business and <laughs> it has done well. It's true. Um, in, New York, in typical New York form, we are the Empire State, yes. <laughs> That's right. Well, it, it, it just goes back to... Yeah, was, I'm, just, thing, I'm just poking fun, yes. I, uh, here's one thing to think about. So we all celebrate, of course, Black History Month every, every February, and uh, for many of us, that's not... Uh, it's the shortest month of the year, and we need to do it all year long. But the point is that Black History Month began as Black History Week, and Black History Week began the same year as the Schomburg Center was established. Wow, so that's beautiful. The very, the very moment when, when Black History was becoming a focus of public policy debates around sort of cultural engagement um, in, the, in the larger fight for Black people's equality, when, when, when black people say we need to tell our own story and we need to provide a counter narrative to the master narrative, the Schomburg Center was right there at the very beginning. 